So we're going to start right now uh, with our first 10 o'clock uh, uh, talk. Uh, it's called Making the DEF CON Badge. And we have uh, MK Factor. Uh, <laughs> Michael and Katie Whiteley. Okay. And uh, we want to thank everyone for coming here today. We know it's been a challenging time for everyone to come to DEF CON and we all appreciate for all you guys coming because it makes the community a lot stronger. But on the other hand, please be safe. Don't be that guy or, or girl. And, and be, um, please be considerate for everyone. Um, one thing I want to mention is that uh, due to the change of uh, no Q&A after the talks, we're doing meet and greets at the, uh, the Chilla area right behind you at 6 o'clock. Okay? Um, so let's roll. Let's, have, let's start DEF CON 29, baby. So, so for those of you wondering, technically I'm on a stage and so therefore the mask rule does not apply to me because I'm a performer on a stage in Las Vegas. <laughs> That's how they, they write the rules here. Um, but um, I'm, I'm fully vaccinated. I will not project onto you. Um, I could try speaking with this on. It kind of works um, if it makes everybody feel better. But anyway, welcome to DEF CON 29. This is, um, this is going to be sort of a combined, I want to do a little welcome briefly and then we're going to kick it off uh, to the badge designers. So I just want to give you a little bit of a perspective of what it was like kind of behind the curtain building up to this. Um, we were at, at no time were we ever really certain this would actually happen. Right? We, we tried to make it happen. We all worked very hard. But now that we're here, it can't stop. So we now feel really comfortable that it's happening. <laughs> because I can see you. So it must be real. Um, and so we knew DEF CON was going to be different and we knew it had to be hybrid, something we've never done uh, before. Because even, even if everything was perfect in the United States, it wasn't perfect for everybody else in the world. And they weren't going to be able to travel and get to DEF CON. And so it wouldn't really be fair for us to party down in the States and not have an option or any way for other people who maybe weren't vaccinated or couldn't be or had small children. So we, we early on made this decision it has to be a hybrid event. And what does that mean? We'll figure it out. <laughs> and, uh, and so what we have figured out is happening right now on Discord. Uh, and so it's really interesting because I'll, I'll be walking down the hallway and it's like um, I'm participating in real life and I'm on Discord and I'm on Twitter and all these different streams are happening and everybody's kind of bridging these gaps together and uh, it, it really feels a little surreal, sort of like there's the, you know, the in real life IRL DT and then there's the Discord DT happening at the same time. Um, and so the big difficulty for us was timelines. Like you have to order things months in advance for a lot of these. And you, you'll hear this theme keep coming up when we start talking about the badge. But it's everything, um, signing contracts, um, ordering parts. And then of course, nothing goes smoothly. The supply chain war with China heats up and all of a sudden everything's two weeks later than you thought. Oh, okay, well then I guess we're not selling that product anymore in the swag store. We just can't get them. And so people have been really understanding, I think. Um, and, and so I want to kind of give a round of applause to you. This is a different year and normally we'd want things to be super polished. We're really excited that it's happening. <laughs> And we're happy you're here and we're going to try to make it the best experience as possible but please uh, bear with us. There will be some, you know, turbulence ahead. Um, but that said, just how chill does this feel? Right? I was, uh, I was walking around Black Hat and I was like, something is different. I mean, is it a self-selection of people? Is it that people are just so excited to be there? But same thing there. Uh, People are just really happy to hang out and see each other. And I'm feeling the same vibe here. And I was at the, the pool last night and it was just actually kind of reminiscent a little bit of the Alexis Park days. People just chilling out at the pool, dodging cockroaches, <laughs> having a drink. 
<laughs> it, was, it was really, really cool. So, so I'm really happy that it's, it's coming together. And normally there's a lot of fires. And I'm thinking maybe because we shrank down to two properties from five, there's just less things to burn. Um, <laughs> so we have less, a few less problems. So the network was up sooner. Just a lot of things were smoother. I'm not saying that we're going to stay this size next year for our 30th anniversary, <laughs> but enjoy it while it lasts um, because I hope by next year we'll have a, a for real uh, single event, not a, not a hybrid event because it's like doing two and a half events. It burns everybody out. Everybody is stressed out. It's too much work. Um, and so we really, really hope that this is a one-time experience. Um, we'll still do stuff on Discord next year, but it's not going to be like a full-on duplicate event. It's just you can't do it without hurting everybody's sanity. <laughs> so, um, so another thing I wanted to touch on is we're all wearing these bracelets for vaccination. We've all got our masks. And um, early on, there was a lot of pressure for DEF CON to pick a standard. I mean, the pressure was from inside. It was from outside um, the organization. And it was, you know what, we need to pick something and stick to it. Let's pick WTO. Let's pick WHO. Let's pick, you know, CDC. I'm not WTO, CDC. And, and then that way, when people are angry, we can say, yeah, but those are the doctors. Those are the experts. And, um, and then we can just make it their problem. And that was really appealing, except they kept changing their stories. And, um, and my, my dad was a career physician his whole life. And so I'd ask, ask him. And it, it generally it was like, well, it's an airborne virus. You're not going to catch it in your ear, right? <laughs> you are not going to catch it licking doorknobs. It's, you're going to breathe it in. It's like, okay, well then masks, right? That wasn't very hard. Um, and then there's going to be a vaccine. Okay, vaccines. Right, like the decisions are sort of made for you. So very early on, we just decided, well, there's an airborne virus, there's going to be masks, and if there's a vaccine for it, there's going to be a vaccine requirement. And we stuck to it through the thick and the thin. And I think in the end, ultimately, that was our right decision because we never changed our story. Um, and watching the CDC flip-flop and switch around, it was so stressful. But we knew our messaging was always consistent. So I hope, I hope you heard that messaging and I hope you appreciated it because it was a lot of pressure on us to change. But I think in the end we did the right thing. Um, and I hope you... So that was the little backstory. And finally, we can all pat ourselves on the back for making the right call. But it, on the journey here, it was not always uh, totally clear. Um, that that was the right call. Okay, so now, new badge designers. You've got some new tech hanging around your neck. We're going to talk about that a little bit. So since we really represent the community and we really try to be a reflection of the trends and the, and the interests, we, we rotate through. We've had different designers, right? Joe Grand, we had Lost Boy. Um, and when it was time to have a new designer, Instead of us just going and picking someone, hey, you know, Mar Maria, let's have you do it, um, we decided to do a call. We do call for papers, let's do a call for badge designers. So our first ever call for badge de designers went out. And we got a bunch of submissions and we're evaluating them and of course it's kind of last minute. And now we have to decide, are you getting a badge designer for an in-person physical? So you want it to be tactile and you want it to be nice? But it's got to be socially distanced. So you don't want people to bunch up or stare over each other's shoulders so much. But some people aren't attending, so it has to work virtually. And they're going to be on their computers, so it might need to work remotely. And it's something that we have to mail that won't get destroyed in the mail. But it can't have big batteries because you can't mail batteries. And I mean, it just starts going on and on and on. And, uh, and you go out there and you realize people have not. I mean, we're kind of a unique situation. Badge designers in the badge life world don't routinely make 10, 20, 30,000 badges. They don't do that. They make 200, 300, maybe 1,000 or so. And so you can't say, show me your portfolio badge maker of all the 20,000 badge shows you've done. It doesn't exist. So we also have to take the risk of who do we believe will actually pull it off. 
Like when we're talking to them, do they seem overly confident? Do they seem like they know their limitations and they're willing to talk frankly to us about their limitations so, you know, we don't blow up each other's reputations? And, um, and so we, we started selecting down and selecting down. We got down to just a handful of just two designers and it was really trying to decide um, between the two. And in uh, all things being equal, we, we decided really, we, we really liked MK, um, you know, we really liked their community approach, we liked the art, we liked the design. And every time we threw them a curveball, they kind of went with it, and they kind of got it. And, uh, and we didn't have to have another design call to really walk through the 59 permutations of why we were making a change. And so we figured, yes, we can really work um, with, with these designers with MK. And so that's why we selected them. And so they're going to talk about their journey. Um, they've got some slides that are updated uh, past what we've already posted on YouTube. So this will be new to you if you've watched the YouTube one. And then we'll have a little bit of a conversation about it and hopefully some time for Q&A. And, uh, and so that's it. So this will be the beginning of our DEF CON and then we'll close it all out with our closing ceremonies as we traditionally do. We've got some, um, some other announcements we want to make. I'll, I'll make it now. And I'll make it again closing just so maybe you can spread the word around uh, to other people at the con. Just like we do uh, a call for papers and we've done a call for badge makers, we did a call for CTF organizers. An order of the overflow is the designer, uh, is the organizers. But <clears throat> a call for CTF organizers is for four years. We want a four year commitment. So there's some consistency because the first year you do it, it's never the way you wanted it and then you learn and you grow. And by about your fourth year, you're running on all cylinders and everything's great. So this is the order of the overflow's final year, their fourth year. Which means for DEF CON 30, our 30th anniversary, we're going to have a new CTF organizers. So what we'll do is we'll announce that pretty soon. We'll start um, evaluating it. The OOO will be around to help, uh, mentor or teach whoever we select. Um, so just, right, the, the renewal of our community goes on with new ideas and new approaches. And so that will be happening uh, with CTF for next year, just like it did with badge designers this year. And so even if you're not really into CTF, if you kind of appreciate it, maybe go over to the CTF place and say, hey, right on, you guys did an awesome job, you know, and, and show them some appreciation because they really, they really done it and taken our CTF to the next level. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to put my mask back on and we're going to pass it off to the M in the K or the K in the M from, from where I'm sitting. So thank you everyone. Hope you enjoy the talk. All right. Hello everyone. This is scary. <laughs> Look at all your beautiful faces. It's so good to see you guys. All right, so yeah, I hope everyone loves the badge. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Any haters out there? Cool. I like your side. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, this was the first time we got all the different badge types together. It was super exciting. Um, so for those who haven't watched our talk on YouTube. We did a fun little thing. Uh, if any of you have seen Between Two Ferns, <laughs> we did a little, little spoof on that sitting there with <laughs> a couple printers. <laughs> so go watch that. It's really awkward. It's great. <laughs> You're welcome. And yeah, we totally just set that up in our kitchen. <laughs> All right. So this is the badge. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what it does and what you can do with it. So it's a two stack, you know, board sandwich kind of protects most of the components. So hopefully we don't have things getting knocked off and broken this year as much as it has in the past. On the end, you got the two USB connectors and one thing we really wanted was being able to interact with fellow attendees, right? And so there are six connectors to connect with. The little side ones, um, you can just connect real quick and it'll do some challenge stuff. But with the USB, you can do some games. I don't know if any of you have tried that yet. I've heard some beeping out there. It's awesome. <laughs> I love to hear it. Brings us great joy. 
Um, and so you can connect more than two. I've seen some decent sized chains. I want to see what, what we can do. Right? Get some really long chains of badges together playing. A 16 bit chain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 bit, that's your limit, so go to town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, if any of you haven't found the lanyard hole, it's labeled on your badge. Yeah? Um, you want to try for the lanyard? Sure. So, um, <laughs> we. When it came to designing this, we're like, he had the great idea. He's like, wouldn't it be fun if it was a USB cable? And we did the, re he, he did a lot of the research because he's amazing. Uh, he found these cables and we're like, that would be kind of fun. That would be something that hasn't been done before. I haven't seen it at any con. I don't know if anyone else has. Uh, we were, oh, my words are hard. Uh, so we, uh, when we found it, I was ex we it definitely clinched the fact that we were going to do USB-C as well, and that we made it so that we can have social distancing ish with connecting of the badges as well. Well, and that I think it was what C versus micro. Yeah. Yeah. And this was our deciding factor. I think was the lanyard that we found. Durability. Yeah. Talk about the cost versus the durability. Yeah. So USB-C connectors obviously way more durable, but they're a lot more expensive. But in the last couple years, prices have come down a lot. And so we can just about get USB-C connectors from overseas for the same price as micro USB we can get here. So that really helped this year. We really wanted to do two USB-C connectors for the daisy chaining, but we could only get the lanyards in A to C. So that was our decision there. Um, so for those of you who are curious, like I was, they sent me a sample lanyard and I immediately opened it up <laughs> to see what's inside. So you don't have to open your lanyards. This is what's in there. Uh, I mainly wanted to see if it was like a, a flexible circuit board type cable, which I really didn't want because they're not uh, reliable and they break. So this is more like what's inside headphone wires and what runs through the badge. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the, the sample they sent me didn't have data lines, just power. But these ones have data lines. Yep. All right, Jeff kind of already talked about this, but yeah, we. You know, we we about? made the funny joke. Wouldn't it be funny someday if we did the DefCon badge? <laughs> and then he comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, they're doing a call for badge makers. Do you want to do it?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. We won't get picked. Let's do it. It'll be it'll be funny. It'll be a fun story. Say we applied once. Um, <laughs> we got on the call and we were kind of in starstruck because we're like, we are talking to Jeff Moss. This is cool. We got this. We'll be fine. Um, <laughs> uh, the stages of going through it, it was, it was exciting and exhilarating and definitely challenged us as badge makers. We had to think of things that we've never had to think before and I don't know, I, it was enjoyable. I actually, it was stressful because like, holy crap, this is happening, but we really enjoyed the process. Yeah, so the call for badge designers went out early February. We got called at the end of February and started that process, which took about a month. So this was our timeline. March 24th to August 4th, <laughs> four months and 11 days. Uh, for context, normal badge design is double that. Six to nine months is <laughs> normal for a small conference. So and that this, means he had four months to put this together. Yeah. So I think he did great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we got picked March 24th, it happened to be that we were going on vacation. <laughs> the next morning we left and drove out to Mississippi to see her family. And so this is me in my mother-in-law's house designing a badge. <laughs> trying to find microcontrollers because anyone else who's been trying to find them, is it super easy? None, none of them there. Uh, so we, we were trying to find which controller we were going to use and I was like, all right, go to buy it. And he's like, it's not there anymore. Son of a <laughs> so. Yeah, we went through, I think, four different microcontrollers. We 
pick one that would work, it was available, we'd start designing a prototype and then it was gone before we could get boards back. <laughs> so in the end we picked one that were like, yeah, it's got enough pins and memory and it should work and we just bought them without trying it. <laughs> so it worked out, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, so, so uh, we really wanted something that could kind of tessellate. Was that the word I wanted? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> words are hard. Uh, so we played with several different ideas. I really ended up, for me, I love the square, as you can tell, because that's what we ended up with. Uh, we thought about doing a circle. We thought about just doing square, like little rectangles. But I, I love the idea of the cubert. Thing where you could connect them and make whatever shape you kind of yeah. wanted. And it looks kind of 3D-ish. Yeah. Without having to do that. <laughs> so this is our initial prototype. Uh, it didn't come out looking like we wanted it to. No. Uh, we did kind of the stretched out letter thing that you could kind of see sideways and it, it was alright but the solder mask didn't have enough resolution and it was kind of not so great. Uh, the consistency wasn't there for what I wanted. Yeah. Um, some of the more, uh, just a few of the ideas that we came through. This was our second prototype. Um, we decided to change and get rid of the bare board. Um, so, let's talk about keycaps. <laughs> These, you know what Sure. Uh, <laughs> we planned this well, can you tell? Uh, so, we had a keycap that we wanted and we liked. We liked to be able to remove the top and put different kind of legends in. We really wanted that idea. We found a... Well, and, and you had your idea for the, for the DEF CON program. If you notice, you have your artwork yes. in the program where you can you know, tell them about it. So we, like we, wanted, we wanted to be able to change it. So we made our own little legends that are in the program. If you see them, you can cut them out, use them then if you want. Also, you can design your own, share them with us. I would love to see what you come up with. I love to see other people's art. Uh, so we had a buyer, or not a buyer, we were the buyers. We had a distributor and we got to the point where he had sent us some examples. We were really happy with them. And then <laughs> we were going to go buy them and they disappeared. Yeah, and we never heard from them again. <laughs> so, so I don't know if we scared them or what happened, but that was about two months before the conference. <laughs> so and yeah, we couldn't get them from anyone else. We contacted dozens of makers for keycaps and they either couldn't get them to us in time. Like for, November? Yeah, crazy amounts of time or they wanted crazy amounts of money for them, like on the order of a dollar a keycap. Just crazy amounts of money. So we did some quick math and <laughs> decided that we could print them. <laughs> Welcome to our army. So yeah, we bought an army of resin printers and the last two months we have been printing every day for hours and hours. <laughs> so if you, if you look in there, we've named them all. We have seven kit. Steve, Kaylee, uh, Kevin, Kevin, Dave, Dave, Jarvis. Yeah. So that way, if one was acting up, we could be like, "Hey, Kaylee's being a jerk. Please go deal with her." <laughs> um, we also named our vats so that we knew which ones were acting up or not. So we named them after the seven dwarfs, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So we had seven of them. I was like, "What's seven? We can do. We can do dwarfs." Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, that way we could keep them in track and know which one's being a jerk and which one needed a new film and I learned so much more about printing than I ever thought. <laughs> yeah. um, so and we also halfway about a month into printing we decided we were gonna, he asked if we could add more um, and because we were printing them we were able to add 3,000 more badges to our build otherwise we would not have been able to. Nope. So. <laughs> this is Kevin. <laughs> yep. Kevin was the first printer and we learned a lot of things. What works, what doesn't, how to clean resin prints in mass. It's way different than trying to clean one at a time. <laughs> By the way, the green stuff doesn't work. 
It turns Don't it green. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's our army. We actually have an eighth one. Is hell. <laughs> yeah. We, the screen broke on one of them last week. And we were right at the end and we needed to push through a bunch more. And Amazon could get us a screen in two days or another printer in one day. So, <laughs> we got another printer and another screen and <laughs> now we've got eight. <laughs> So this is what the keycaps kind of look like coming off the printer. So this is our process. Uh, there's a lot of alcohol involved. <laughs> For someone who doesn't drink, there was a lot of alcohol in my house. Um, so, uh, so in the first vat, it's kind of milky, or not vat bucket, I guess I would say. Uh, we would do our initial dunk, leave it there for like five minutes. We'd break them into the stirring bucket and give them another five minute wash, make sure the, the, the flow was consistent. And we originally would let them dry from that point and then put them in water, put them in the cure, and then lay them out to dry. Well, water takes a lot longer to dry. Also, if they weren't completely dry, the resin of the alcohol would turn foggy if we stuck them in water too soon. Yep. Which is not what I wanted. We wanted a clearer, thing. So I one day was like, you know, alcohol is clear. So I was like, hey, we could do this. So we changed the third step into using the alcohol. We have a filter that would filter out all the cured pieces and we'd, we'd cure it in the alcohol and then it would dry faster on the last stage. We could put them in a bucket and click them together after that point. <laughs> yeah. So. It sped it up quite a bit. A lot. And yeah, didn't know we'd have to buy car parts. Um, a lot. <laughs> we'd, we'd buy, you know, big cases from Sam's Club of, I think, three gallons at a time, and I don't know, we probably bought 10 or 12 cases, so. About 30, 30 gallons? Yeah, probably about 30 gallons. But <laughs> the next step. And there, there could have been a lot more. So we created a device <laughs> to separate the resin from the alcohol. <laughs> It worked great. It does work. <laughs> I did not expect said device would be so easy to make. <laughs> so, yeah, we were able to reclaim about 75% of the alcohol that we used. Which saved a lot in cost. Got a ton of money. Uh, and what's left in that afterwards is this gelled resin Gelatinous stuff. Thing? <laughs> so we'd scoop it out and put it out in the sun to dry and cure. That way it could be safely thrown away but there is a lot of waste with the resin. These parts are so small, resin sticks to them, and so in the end, I think we used about 90 liters of resin to print our 50-some thousand keycaps. <laughs> yeah. That keycaps. Is, how many was in there, did we say? Like, I think 16,000 fit in one of those. 16,000, and we did 54,000. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so we have three kids and we kind of neglected them for the last four months. <laughs> we're really good parents, can you tell? Um, but they were super supportive. Uh, we, they loved learning this process. They think it's the coolest thing. They're like, can we keep these printers so that they can print things as well? Uh, yeah, they've, they've been good little supporters, so. All right, so these are the first panels we got from the assembly house. And then we started assembling them, and oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, Did you know 10,000 is a lot? Like 13,000 is a lot. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So that's one of the boards. If any of you haven't seen the inside, pictures have been circulating for a couple weeks, but that's what the inside looks like. Um, these little connectors on the side we had soldering issues with. Um, they've got these little lips on the front that kind of hold them up straight, but the surface tension of the solder was pulling them off the edge of the board just a little bit and so they would tip down. And it was one of those things where we had already ordered all the boards, all the panels. So we just went with it. They work. They're fine. They're just a little crooked. And it he's, just. He's not OCD. It's, it's fine. Uh, he's, yeah. he's good. He doesn't have perfections. 
Um, this was a fun one. The first panels we got, um, if you look at these little spring contacts here, these ones are taller than the ones on top. So what had happened was they shipped them and the panels are next to each other and they squished against each other so hard that they permanently compressed those contacts. And that's a big problem because those are what connects the top and bottom boards together. And the spring contacts are four millimeters tall. The space between the boards is 3.6 millimeters. <laughs> so any difference means they don't make contact. So um, another thing that happened with having boards made that you don't realize is the panels warp when they get, when they go through the reflow oven. Especially because we're doing double sided assembly, they warp a lot. And so you can kind of see this curves up a little bit on this side. It's kind of a little bit potato chip and that means more space on that side where those connectors are. And so some of them just plain don't connect properly. Uh, so the, yeah, there have been some issues with the, the touch slider on the side not working quite right when connected to a computer. Um, you can kind of squish the boards together a little and that can help. But it's one of those things that didn't happen with the prototypes. Right? Only once you start doing it in production you find these things. We learned some things. And, <laughs> yeah, and with only four months we didn't have time to run, you know, a, a test run of a thousand or whatever. It was just make them all and go with it. So, you okay with you, you go. Okay. So <laughs> our assembly house, they came up with a really cheap, quick solution for the shipping problem. It was an amazing solution. Yeah. So we had talked about all kinds of trays and spacers and things we could use. In the end, they got these little rubber spacer dots and just put them on the corners in the center of the panels and sandwiched them with a piece of cardboard and it kept them away from each other and it was perfect. It was fantastic. It was they're everywhere in my house. Yeah. But they're fantastic. <laughs> so another thing with manufacturing, when you order parts from DigiKey or whatever, they tell you how they're packaged. Are they on reels? Are they in bulk? Are they in trays? And trays can be kind of ambiguous. Are they in the nice plastic trays that go in pick and place machines? Or are they just flimsy plastic trays that hold a thousand of them? And they ended up not being the nice trays. <laughs> so our, many, our assembly house, they CNC'd these little trays and then someone sat there and filled them all with <laughs> USB connectors so that they could be put on by the pick and place machine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those USB connectors turned out to be a giant pain in the butt. Um, they weren't soldering properly for the first batch of panels. I apologize if your connectors fell off or broke off. Uh, Hopefully HHV can help you out with that. Um, on the left, this is they ran a temperature profiler through their oven with thermocouples attached to every USB connector on the panel to make sure that they could get it dialed in and get them soldered properly. Another thing we ran into, the USB-C connector. On a few boards, these holes where the, board, the connector is supposed to stick through, they ended up filled up with solder mask. Yeah just a really random thing and it was crazy. Granted we used a very cheap board manufacturer because <laughs> we needed them to be cheap. But these are the kind of things you run into with that. But they look so pretty coming off the line. Yeah, they do. <laughs> By the way, that's what 10,000 coin cells looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 40,000 key switches. <laughs> Welcome to my house. <laughs> this is what it looked like for the last month. Yep. <laughs> oh man. So many late nights splashing badges and <laughs> separating panels. This was our first attempt to building for all those who were virtual. Virtual. And so, yeah, we learned a lot that first couple nights. <laughs> yep. So, we built these little test jigs, which worked out really, really well. Uh, just a little toggle clamp on top and a bunch of pogo pins and they worked really, really well. We got little connectors on the side that when you press it down they would go into the female connectors and test everything. And it, yeah, it worked great. They, we ended up building six of them. That's Katie soldering a bunch. And yeah, used them to flash 13,000 badges. 
We also used his horde of a family. Yes. Because he's the oldest of eight. <laughs> yep. So I had lots of family come over and help, and <laughs> it's, it was ridiculous. <laughs> so they came over so many weekends over the last month to help. It was amazing. So... <laughs> Yeah, so most of that was for the first 3,000 that went out to virtual people. After that, we had another 10,000 to build. And they all showed up last week. Yep. <laughs> because of those connectors that didn't show up on time, they were six weeks late. We were supposed to have six weeks to assemble all these. <laughs> Instead, we had last weekend. Yeah. So we got, we called in our Saint Con friends and our DC801 friends. Got a space bigger than my house. Yep, <laughs> and we just, However many badges you think 10,000 is, it's more. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they kept having babies in boxes. Because like, I would empty a box and all of a sudden there was like 50 more. And I was like, are you f no. <laughs> Words were had. No. <laughs> yeah, so, so many of everything. It's just ridiculous. By the way, this is what the inside of some of the, the badges look like if anyone's doing any challenge stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, putting in those little spacers was a that pain in the butt. That took a dig with like 15 people doing it. Yeah, just to put the plastic spacers in all of these. So I made, they hurt your hands after a few. <laughs> so I made some little 3D printed presses that we could put them all in. And then I ended up doing the same for the key switches because those were even worse. So you can kind of see one there. Um, yeah, piles and piles of badges. There's me doing it. That's a better picture of the little press we used. And yeah, I think we had a dozen of those going. Um, so many <laughs> helpers. In my rush, I did not ask for permission. permission to use their photos, so those are random faceless people. They are our wonderful helpers and we are grateful. <laughs> we are so grateful to all of them. They showed up. So many people and so many badges. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So thank you to everyone that helped us put these together. Yeah. It would not have been possible without you, yeah. you helpers and those and, who came to our rescue. And especially everyone here. We had dozens of goons and other people helping us uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday to finish up the last ones that showed up on Monday. So <laughs> it was a crazy rush to the end, but we got there. Um, me doing some coding and testing and everything. There's my son trying to play Simon on three boards and <laughs> getting frustrated. <laughs> he was a good tester. Yeah. Um, so this happened yesterday. This is the biggest one I've seen so far. I think it was 20 or 21 people in the chain. It's awesome. Yeah. Really awesome. Did it work? Uh, I, I heard they got up to four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we went with original Simon timings and everything. So you've got a three second timeout and <laughs> they only flashed for like half a second. That's challenging. And if anyone gets longer, tag us on Twitter, the MK Factor. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. Um, for any of you who haven't gone to the chill out area, uh, they created this really awesome display. You can go plug your badge in and it will show you all the stats, what, what you've connected to, what, how many games you've played, what your scores were, all kinds of good stuff. So I got sent this picture last week. That is not a circuit board. Someone created this. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's impressive. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, someone created that. I, I think know. those connectors are even like... Yeah, they've got little side connectors made out of something. I don't know. They're it's painted. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever did this, I was impressed. <laughs> yeah. So, and then there have been so many people hacking on it already. We've got people who have made generators for the, the virtual stuff. Um, we... Did, so you guys all can connect your badges together, but the virtual people can't. And so 
we created a way for them through the serial, uh, USB to serial console to generate these strings of characters that they could pass back and forth to connect their badges over Discord or whatever other chat they're using. And people have already decoded it, figured out how it works, created their own generators to, you know, make fake connections and pass off things on their badges. And then a couple of people also made uh, internet relays for their badges. So you can connect your badge virtually through the internet to other badges and it does it all. It's amazing. And someone even made a 3D printable like little set stand for your desk so that it will not move around on your desk while you're using it. It's awesome. <laughs> This was our last two, four months? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of that. This is, <laughs> this is how, how we felt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you see us walking around the conference like this, you know why. <laughs> uh, it has been a ridiculous four months but it's been worth it and it's awesome and it's done and we're so happy it's done. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you. you. You can see why we selected them. <laughs> right? They just they epitomize so much of the hacker spirit that we really want to want to call attention to and, and celebrate. So that was really, really cool. Hey, so we've got about eight minutes. Um, so we're happy to take any questions from the audience. Anybody's got one? Raise your hand. Okay. Sir, I saw you first. Hi, I'm Jacob. Uh, can you tell us more about the software that you have on there? Tell us a little bit more about the software you've got on there. Oh, and that we should, we should remind them about the software updates. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, and protocols. Yeah, so um, software, do you want to know like features or? Well, like what is it based on? Uh, what is the process? What are the challenges you have with it? Um, yes, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we just did it with Atmel Studio. I guess it's Microchip Studio now. Um, Use some of their frameworks to make it easier and um, so many challenges, mainly time. <laughs> um, trying to get all this stuff working in the short amount of time. Um, what else? Lack of sleep put a lot of issues Well, like the, like the protocol. Like how did you decide how to inner badge communicate? Okay. So a lot of that was decided based on how easy it would be for me to code it and debug it. <laughs> um, and also, you know, I had considered, you know, this is DEF CON, I can encrypt it and do all this stuff. And in the end, I decided one real crypto on a microcontroller is difficult to implement. And everyone's going to dump the firmware and you'd have the keys anyway. And so I decided making it hackable is more fun, right? I, you know, a little bit of obfuscation, but people are going to figure it out. And there's a lot of joy in people figuring it out and hacking it. And so that's what we did. So the question was, we, they bulk manufactured the resin keypads. Is there a reason why they didn't just go with bulk keys from China? So I, we really wanted, so the ones that we had chosen were very similar to this. Um, and we really, really wanted to be able to have them not just be a sticker on it, because stickers leave residue, they get yucky. This way they could be protected, your legends are a little nicer in there, right? Uh, and then by 3D printing them ourselves, we were able to put DEF CON on the keycaps, which we kind of really loved. And if you ever look at like the goons or the presses, they have their names on them as well. Same with the Ubers, they have Uber on them and things like that. So that was one of the other deciding factors we could personalize them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're good. It's very hard to see. <laughs> hey, another question? I thought I saw other hands. 
Other hands. Okay, over on. Yeah. They so they currently have they had what about seventy badges linked up. That is all. Yeah. Tag us in it, please. Yeah, That's well done. amazing. Did that you guys play your Simon Says? Okay, last question. It really worked with that many people. I think some kids are Okay. So let's let's close out, talk about the firmware update. The firmware you've got, you mentioned. Okay. Um, there's an update, but if you go to defcon.org slash signal, that is where all the updates and instructions will be. So if you ever want to do it now, you want to do it a week from now, defcon.org slash signal will be where the badge software repository and updates are, right? Yep. Are, are any updates coming or is what, what's there is current? And um, I don't know if it's been updated yet. I sent the defcon webmaster a new file, but I don't know if it's been updated. Yeah. So there's, there's one that should be slated to be posted if it hasn't been already. Yeah. And it will not reset your challenge status or anything like that to update firmware. Right on. Well, thank you very much. Like we mentioned, uh, the goon mentioned at the beginning, there's sort of a Q&A mix and mingle tonight at 6. It's there. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. We awesome. were just told it's there. So yeah, like, the file is firmware. The firmware, current firmware is on the slash signal is, is current. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for coming to the Welcome in Badge Backstory talk. We look forward to seeing you around.